Craig, uh, welcome today. Thanks for being here today. So you have your cup of coffee. Fill. Top of the morning to you. Yeah. It's been a long decorating weekend for you all. Um, so much fun, man. That was a fun day yesterday. What a great day in yeah. every way, man. It yeah. was just so great to, you know, it, th- this isn't everything in ministry, but when the room is more full, yeah, it's just good to see the family growing, yeah. you know, and, yeah, but the... The hallway chatter, the laughter, the smiles, the conversations around the table in the Family Life Center. Yeah. I mean, just everybody really enjoying being together and seeing the various teams doing things. You know, the people in the kitchen cooking, the people out in the fireside room just replenishing food and mopping floors yeah. and all the decorating teams. Man, it's just good to see everybody working together. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah what you had yesterday was, was truly a high percentage of people involved in some way if yep. not the worship service of course you had the, the the additional participants with the choir up there uh you had people assigned for tasks and of course leaning into the holiday season mm-hmm. um we're moving into thanksgiving this week if you're listening to it online um it people are just many people are just excited that that's happening even people who have been through uh and the table won't look the same this year I think there's right. a sense of uh, I want to contribute in some way. So, uh, the dessert table. Did you see the dessert table? I did, but I, because of the journey I'm on right now, I had to avoid it. <laughs> Man, I, I could not. I could not believe it. I mean, I I walked up with people who were hitting it for the second and third time. Oh yeah. And uh, and I and I love that, and that gave me a chance. Uh, not to judge them for what they're putting on their plate, but to actually just have some really good conversations. I had some great conversations with some new people yesterday. That's awesome. Uh, great conversations with people I haven't touched base with. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were a few around the table that had some really long history back to like the origins of the church. Which really? I cannot wait to sit down with them and record their conversations for our 100th celebration coming up. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that 100th celebration because... I don't want to overstate, but nearly probably a half a dozen different independent conversations with people yesterday, that subject of the 100th anniversary came up, and mm. people, I think, are really looking forward to that time, and um, so I'd, I'd shared with the choir a couple of weeks ago that, you know, we've reached out to former staff people, and that it looks like almost everybody who's still living that was a, fo- a former minister of music or worship leader here, right. they're going to be with us. And so yep. people are anticipating, you know, seeing people they haven't seen in a long time. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah, it'll be exciting. I mean, I, I, I can guarantee you uh, right now that almost all the pastors uh, that are uh, living still to this day uh, are all but one, I think, are going to be here. That's awesome. And, uh, and I'm, I'm thrilled that they're going to be here. But for some reason, uh, the pastors that are in heaven right now, they didn't RSVP. I, they, <laughs> they didn't. I haven't heard from any of them. So. You need to check faith book. <laughs> right. They've mess- <laughs> instant messaged you there. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, here's the other thing you can be guaranteed of, Pastor. It, here we are, end of November. Yeah. That 100th anniversary next September is going to it's be fast. here like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's fast. It's fast. It's kind of fun because we have the, we have the caterer lined up. We have, um, you know, the, the speakers lined up. It'd be a multiple two-hour service. Uh, and honestly, it'll be so packed with some items that people just don't, won't realize the time. Yeah. It'll be a fun reunion. But, but the whole, that whole feel of reunion uh, and yesterday around the table yeah. is, is huge. Yeah. Uh, I have not yet found a way to have Sunday lunch every Sunday. Because I just I think I think that's the that's the key to church growth. Yeah. Is and I and I say that tongue in cheek, but I also think that's real. Yeah. Uh, because people, when the service is done, they go their own directions mm-hmm. and go back into their own ruts. Not to mm-hmm. overuse that word uh, mm-hmm. from yesterday, but they go back into the routine. But it was a it was a nice break for sure. Yeah. Um, good, good good season and the flow the flow of worship uh, one to the next. I'm not sure I've done communion or uh, presented the elements in in the at the Lord's table, communion service or Eucharist, whatever tradition uh, people are are listening to or from. But I'm not sure I've done that with that kind of fluidity. Hmm. I mean, there's been 
uh, pretty close some moments, but it was kind of like the audience just didn't expect it. Mm -hmm. one, one moment they're involved in worship, and the next moment they're mm -hmm. taking the Lord's, and then they're back in worship. It was just a, it was a great transition. And I'm not sure I did that perfectly as planned, but it was a really fun uh, way to do that. I love that surprise element. Yeah, it's him. interesting. We, the church has kind of quarantined almost the liturgy of uh, communion. Uh, it, it, when you take a look at the 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 early church, you know the the practices to which Christ called everybody centered on on the table, centered on communion. It was like of paramount importance. And now, for a lot of a lot of denominations, even it's it's kind of an afterthought and almost be, viewed as something that we is like a tip of the hat to God almost. Mm -hmm. You know, it's perfunctory almost. Mm -hmm. But man, it it was. It was the centerpiece moment for the early church at Christ's command and invitation, actually. It was the centerpiece of worship. So, <clears throat> like you, I was encouraged by that. I want to tell you another quick thing. Can I rewind the clock to yesterday just for one brief yeah. story? Yeah, do it. So, your, your sermon yesterday mm -hmm. had some really interesting reverberations and ripples throughout the day for me, oh. um, thinking about... Uh, Paul's admonishment to be holy, live a sober life, you know, live mm -hmm. socially, and mm -hmm. all of those key points that you walked us through. What I didn't think about at the time walking through that sermon with you yesterday inside the, with the congregation, what I, did, what I didn't think about in that moment is that several hours later, Deanna and I and Hayden and Maddie and my parents and my cousin Stacy would gather around the dinner table to celebrate my daughter's 25th birthday and my mm. dad's 80th birthday. Mm. They share a birthday yesterday. Yeah, yeah. And we, uh, as a family, my mom and my brother and I, had um, gathered a lot of tribute videos from people over the past four to six weeks, basically, and mm. had people send them to this website where nice. we were able to edit this. It, 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 it's so far, it's like an hour and a half long That's of so these cool. tributes to my dad yeah. on his 80th birthday. Yeah. And it was... An amazing thing to book in the days to to hear that admonishment from you, but it was so powerful then on the backside to hear all these people that have known my dad for mm. 60, 70, uh, some yeah, of them. Yeah, the Tabitha whole, factor. Say again? The Tabitha factor. Exactly. Yeah. It, it was a living example <laughs> of that. And um, I didn't even, you know, it because my parents weren't able to be here yesterday, it wasn't worth discussing that with them but yeah. all, all night last night I was thinking man it's so great to hear that admonishment from Paul but then to see how living the life of disciplines mm -hmm. not only makes a difference for one person but makes a difference for countless generations mm -hmm. it, what really stuck out to me is my 25 year old daughter now and her tribute to hear her say the things about her grandfather that she mm -hmm. said mm -hmm. Uh, but then also to hear several people in these videos say to say to my dad, "Hey Steve, because of the life that you and Jan invested into us, we know Jesus Christ, and we wouldn't have otherwise." You yeah, know? yeah. That again, it's that tab of the factor. So it was a really great bookend day. So thank you for that message. I I know you didn't go into it planning <laughs> that for me, but it was just a great reminder last night in in, in the immediacy of that moment. I love that because you, you've also, by doing that, uh, you've used that word encouragement. Uh, the series is encouragement. Yeah. And, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of uh, people. Uh, this is going to sound more, but I don't mean it that way at all. But I think uh, many times if I, when I'm at a funeral service, mm -hmm. I hear these wonderful words said about a person. And sometimes I wonder if we've ever said that yep. to their face. Yep. And so I'm the kind of person that, you know, let's celebrate, encourage one another, and bring all those words together. Uh, I've, I've begun that conversation with, with my, my dad. Uh, I've been very intentional about saying the things that I'd want him to hear that I remember about his life. And so yeah. if, when I begin reflecting uh, back on farm life or home life, um, I, I want to make sure that my parents know I'm acknowledging and tipping the hat yeah. uh, to all the things that, that to them were mundane and perhaps even frustrating, but that made a huge impact on my life. Yeah. And I'm grateful. I love that. 
Encourage I, one another. I do want Beautiful. to take a moment to encourage you today, too, yeah. because Deanna and I have talked about this, and actually I said something to David Bentley about it uh, last Wednesday night. Um, you are a, a gifted preacher and a mm-hmm. great pastor. Having said that and not taking, barring anything from it, over the past six or seven weeks, man, there's just been something different. You're like at a new level in your preaching in the pulpit. You may not mm-hmm. even be aware of it, and, mm-hmm. and, or, and it might be maybe that my heart is listening differently. I don't think that's the case. I just right. think God's stirring something in your heart right now as our pastor, but it's contagious. I want to encourage you with that today. Praise the it's, Lord. Uh, it's just a whoops. It's a unique thing to to see God doing that in you. No, I, right I, I appreciate that, and um, it, it's interesting if I may reflect on that because I've I've heard similar comments from different people, which you know honestly, from my perspective, surprises me because the discipline I'm about is is the same. But yeah. I, but I do I do think in our church there is a, uh, and we'll talk about. Uh, we, had, matter of fact, started the small group Ping Life mm-hmm. uh, this last week, mm-hmm. and there's a there's a work of the Spirit down deep in the work of everyone here, and I think I, I truly think um, the church is on the tipping point of of where we need to be. And, and honestly, if I were just being honest, uh, majority times, um, and, and here's a confession from a pastor, and I think most pastors, if they admitted it, would realize. We're in a time in which we just don't always know what to do. Yeah. Uh, uh, Post pandemic, we're in a time that we just honestly just don't know what to do, and and I think I see a lot of pastors going back to the simplest of forms, hmm. uh, whether it be uh, the tone of preaching or the purpose of preaching, um, focusing on those things that that matter, the around the table moments, mm-hmm. um, and, and the other part of that is last. Uh, this week we actually end the the three-year cycle of circle highlight underline wow and so that has been a that has been a test for me from this preaching standpoint to give my notes to people uh, sometimes a, a year ahead or at yeah. least the text a year ahead right. and um it, it has really shaped how i think through scripture i mean truly it's it's been a growing experience for me so uh, i had professors always say that a growing pastor um, can propagate a growing congregation. Yeah, and uh, I'm good, trying man. to grow as much as I can. But but thank you for seeing. Oh <laughs> yeah, at dude. least a little bit of growth. That's encouraging to me. I appreciate that. Yeah, of but course. but God is at work. All credit to the Lord. Yeah, uh, truly, God is at work Amen. among our people. Amen. Um, I, we're we're headed into. I'm, I want to talk about the the juxtaposition a little bit of this weekend that we're approaching. Sure. Um, in in doing worship planning, mm-hmm. uh, I know that um, sometimes it's the first Sunday of Advent following Thanksgiving right. Day. Um, often it's not. Right. But we have a culture of people who have been set up since mid October mm-hmm. that you know Christmas <laughs> is coming. It kind of bypasses Thanksgiving. Well, now Christmas is in the foyer. It's in the yeah, sanctuary. It's everywhere. <laughs> It's everywhere, but it, but the uh, my text uh, doesn't doesn't begin the Christmas story until the first Sunday, Advent Sunday. Right. Number one is the first Sunday in December. Right. And so my text doesn't necessarily lend to what the culture is saying today, and and because of that, we're we're facing people who are looking for. Uh, the Christmas, uh, I'm going to just say warm fuzzies, and I don't mean that demeaningly at all. Right. right. But culture has shaped us to anticipate Christmas. That's the positive side of culture. Yeah. Is we're pre- preparing ahead of time for Christmas. Um, but this weekend, um, the text is from Matthew, and it's Jesus saying, well, what you've done to the least of these, you've done unto me. Mm-hmm. And there's confusion with the disciples. So it's not even a Christmas story. And so it's it's always interesting the juxtaposition from culture saying this week you have to do Christmas and those of us who are following the church calendar readings um, are saying no technically preparation for Christmas Day doesn't even begin until uh, you know December 3rd I think it is and yet there's a great runway into the Christmas season here Um, Jesus was saying something to us when he when the announcement of his birth uh, took place on hillsides 
to some simple shepherds mm -hmm. who were in those days the least of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, his earthly father was a carpenter uh, mm -hmm. who, you know, wasn't necessarily uh, someone of prominence in the community. You Probably know, uh, pinched his finger every once in a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, there's something for us to investigate even in that story about the least of these. Yeah, you know? agreed, um, agreed. It, it, it does set up um, very well the what what Christ wants us to be and, and, and even continuing Paul's conversation from last week, how and what we are to look like to, to other people. Mm. Uh, and it has to do with our this social gospel that we have. So the phrase that I'm focusing on this week is is going to be accidental ministry, uh, and I borrow that phrase from hmm. from another pastor because I, I like that approach. Um, and accidental accidental ministry, basically, I'm going to try to set the stage that everyone, whether you have a, a clergy card or call the clergy, uh, call the ministry specifically like pastors do mm -hmm. uh, or if you're a person who who sits in the in the rows in the uh, in, in the church uh, everyone has a call in the ministry in some way mm -hmm. and it's it's incredibly purposeful and maybe that tab of the factor uh, note is uh, is a reminder of what our text is approaching this week that's great um, and the, the simplest ways to, to care for people uh, for sure um, let me ask you this question, calling the ministry, uh, my calling to ministry, I was very clear. Your calling to ministry came at what age? Um, I was um, about, I think, 15. Okay, okay. And it, I would say it was both lifetime process and also kind of a crisis moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and uniquely, <laughs> the reason I remember this is I was attending a conference with my dad down in Dallas, the Christian Booksellers Association Convention in Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. which in those days was a huge organization, people peddling all their Jesus stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, testaments and everything in between, everything from there to music yeah. and everything in between. And after a long day, um, I went up to the rooftop of the Hilton Hotel downtown D Dallas, where the hot tub was. Mm. And I was there was nobody else on the rooftop but me. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in this uh, hot tub by myself, looking out over an endless sea mm. of city lights, because mm -hmm. Dallas is so spread out, you yeah. know. And I remember thinking to myself, man, how many people is, does that represent as mm -hmm. far as I could see in every direction? And mm -hmm. almost audibly, the Lord said to me, and I want you to go reach those people for me yeah. in the ministry. Wow. And, um, it was a catalytic moment. And, and I had already been processing a lot growing up in a ministry home, you know, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. that was a definitive moment for sure. Yep. And, and same with me. Uh, very similar. It wasn't a hot tub experience, you know. <laughs> um, but but it was a, it was a definite call to ministry, uh, yep. to go and 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 reach the masses. I didn't know what that meant. Right. What what I think a lot of people um, who who aren't who aren't called into clergy ministry or pastoral ministry, but are ministers by the fact that they're followers of Jesus. Yeah. What what hangs people up in some way or confuses people is this, can God really use the gifts and skills that I have? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the truth is uh, being a, a minister uh, and caring for uh, and ministering to people is a lot more practical, a lot more zoned in on yeah. our experiences. God doesn't ignore right. our experiences. He actually fills us with his spirit so that we can become what he needs us to be. AKA, uh, Jesus called uh, the fishermen to be fishers of men. Right. He didn't take away necessarily just laying down your nets, mm -hmm. but you're picking up different kind type of net. And so uh, Jesus will take, you know, those experiences. And so all those experiences I had in my life, uh, yeah. they're now coming into play here in this uh, particular uh, context and setting of ministry that I have. So, right. so I'm hoping to break open the fact that ministry is, is a lot more simpler, uh, a lot less, uh, it, we need to enter it with a lot less fear Mm -hmm. uh, because it, it looks a lot like what some people are doing already. Right. Like in a simple, everyday way. You bet. Yeah. You bet. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for your time, man. Thanks Thank for you. helping us out. Thank I did you. get a, 
a text message yesterday from a friend. Uh, so it's nice to know that we uh, we have at least one person listen to this podcast. <laughs> I, I know there are, I know there are more, but, but there, there, we, we have at least sixty who can listen to it because they were sent the link. But uh, well, tell your brother I said thanks. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kind of it's kind of cool, and I know I know my family listens, and yeah, my family does listen. To it. But but the truth is, I it, it's it's kind of fun to know that that this. Uh, kind of conversation uh, does impact people because they only see us uh, on stage. And so thanks yeah. for taking the time to walk oh, off thanks stage for the invitation. and have human fun conversations about how we wrestle with ministry. Yeah. And, um, and I, I hope it encourages people along the way. It helps me, encourages yeah. me. Thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.